started. Do we have any announcements for the sake of the whole group? Any announcements for the sake of the whole group? All right, Sue, Miss All right. Let's call on if you don't have any questions for us, you can call on the Bottom of turkey and all the trimmings is daunting. We are doing Thanksgiving. Let you know by today, please, so we can plan accordingly. So if you'd like a home for Thanksgiving, uh, I think we'll have a small group here. Uh, come see you, Mrs. Saunders. All right. Yes, Linda. Okay, our Fairborn Senior Center is going to also have a big Thanksgiving dinner that they always have. And I understand our church is going to help Wednesday making pies. Yeah. We'll go towards that. And if anyone wants to, uh, also they need green beans. <laughs> green beans. <laughs> we get 19 cans of green beans, the big kind. I don't, so, um, yeah, they said number 10 can. I've never heard of that, but it's the biggest one I guess you would get. <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, they have two different um, times that you can go. And then also, Wednesday at 7 in the morning at the Senior Center, the Fairborn Rotary and the Chamber of Commerce is having the annual prayer breakfast for the community. So, um, you know, if, if you would like to come to that, it's kind of early, but hey, you know, get your day started, then we can come here and make pies. Okay, and it does cost, I think, $11 for a ticket. But hopefully you can come to some of these festivities. Thank you so much. Yep. There it is on the board. Yeah, 9 o'clock uh, here. Uh, that time for pie making party. Our uh, objective yeah. is to make 14 pies. Seven apple pies, seven pumpkin pies with a sugar substitute to make it uh, just slightly healthier. Uh, and uh, two of those will be reserved for snacks at the end of our pie making party. Uh, and uh, they also will try to throw in lunch. So if you are interested in coming, please stop talking to me so that I uh, have enough for lunch, uh, not food for lunch uh, afterwards. Also, if you are helping out, or even if you're not helping out and would like a free t-shirt, uh, youth size is over there on the piano, adult size is over okay. here. The new Thrive logo shirts are out, and they are quite comfy as always. <laughs> All right. Okay, any other announcements for the sake of the whole group? Yes, I think. Deadline for the gift cards for the seminary student and his family are the first Sunday in December, which is the 4th of December. So if you're wanting to give a gift to them to use for Christmas, make sure you get it to myself, to the church office, or you can leave it with my husband in the room. Um, because I'm going to be doing Sunday school Christmas program. So, and there's that too, the Sunday school Christmas program. And also, Sunday school. In January, we're going to start a new quarter. We need teachers. You know, so think about it, pray about it. It's one of the most important things that we can do for our children is to teach them about Jesus. So um, see Sue or myself if, if you're interested or willing. You can teach for a quarter and then just to put them off. Um, or you can sign up to be a substitute because we always need a substitute. So please consider teaching Sunday school. Thank you. All right, Elson. Next Sunday is Script Water Sunday. It's a good time to get your Christmas shopping started. Uh, yes, thank you. Today is the last day for Cyclamens. All right, Cyclamens for Christmas? For Christmas, yes. Uh, today is the last day of Sunday. Sign ups in the North Axe, well, right? It's and it's also coming around. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Brett? All right, very good. All right. Any other announcements for the sake of the whole group? All right, just uh, again, kind of put a few of the highlights. Again, voters meeting, 4 o'clock today. Thanksgiving Chapel service for our school. Uh, if you'd like to come today, uh, it's uh, Tuesday afternoon, 2.30. Uh, usually lasts about a half hour or so. Uh, pie making party Wednesday morning. Again, RCP, so if you want lunch especially. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve service of prayer and preaching, non-communion uh, service. Uh, Wednesday evening at 7. Uh, I'm going to be out of town uh, to go see my parents, probably back for Sunday. 
Uh, December, uh, we've got a band concert from our school. The band is amazing this year, just amazing. Uh, their uh, concert will be here at Bethlehem uh, in the Phys Ed room, uh, our, our little gym, uh, Thursday, December 8th, 7 o'clock. The uh, Sunday School Christmas program here, uh, December 11th, during Bible study time. Uh, then our school Christmas program called Scrooge Revisited uh, will be Thursday, December 15th at 7 p.m. This will take place at the Hope Hotel uh, right on the edge of the uh, Air Force Base. Don't worry, you do not need base access to get to the Hope Hotel. All right. All right. Uh, come join us for that. And then Christmas caroling, we're looking, we're tracking on Sunday, December 18th, probably at 4 p.m. All right, our catechism du jour uh, is going to be the first commandment, so we'll do this repeat after me style. You shall have no other gods. You shall have no other gods. We should fear, love, and trust in God. We should fear, love, and trust in God. Above all things. Above all things. All right, Sunday School dismissed. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We are on uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 9. And uh, the title is Arise, Shine, or Sergei Illuminari. Sorry for butchering Latin. Uh, again, an overview. Uh, we pretty much covered last week the context and organization of Isaiah chapter 60 uh, and really honed in on some of the stylistic points. Uh, of uh, chapter 60. So I'll call that 95% done. I'll revisit just a little bit to get back uh, into the swing of things. We'll dive straight into the text of Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 9, and then give some application and closing thoughts. So here we go. The context. Again, the overarching theme of chapter 60 the way to God is open. And that we can see and hear and take to heart a gospel invitation. Okay, that as we listen to Isaiah chapter 60, let's receive it as a gospel invitation. And some of the key images that we'll see in this chapter and in a couple chapters afterwards in 61 and 62 as well. It's going to talk a lot about wealth or treasures on earth. It's going to talk about foreign kings and foreign nations. It's going to talk about people or peoples coming to Zion. Uh, there's going to be a lot of images of peace and security. And that God is the eternal source of light. Okay, So these are going to be some key images that we're going to see throughout uh, this uh, section. Uh, and if you keep reading in Isaiah, it's going to uh, reappear quite frequently. All right. The other thing I want to emphasize today is the style of chapter 60 is visually stunning. There's a lot of words about, hey, look up and see, uh, and, and you will see this happening, and you shall see that happening. Uh, it's very descriptive, and there's a lot of vivid pictures of the things that will happen. Uh, and so, uh, we did a little bit of this last week. Uh, we just listened to verses 10 to 14, and we came up with a, a lot of images. And uh, what we're going to do is when we cover the text 1 through 9, we'll take a break uh, in little sections, listen to it again, and see what kinds of images, what kind of you know, vivid pictures is God painting in our minds as the prophet Isaiah sings. All right? And actually, that gets to the last part. Besides Isaiah chapter 60, what other portions of the Bible are very visually stunning? So we play like Family Feud style, right? <laughs> Name a visually uh, stunning portion of the Bible. Yes, Mike. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount. 
the Sermon on the Mount, right? Jesus is describing a lot of things, right? Literally and figuratively. Right? The house on the rock, right? Versus the house on the sand, right? And those of you who have seen houses being destroyed from underneath, right? You know, it's like that vision. You can't get it out of your head, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the book of Daniel, like the whole book of Daniel, is visually stunning. Uh, just all the descriptions that take place. Uh, yeah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Met, and Met, I can't pronounce that name. Uh, right? It's like Rakshak and Benny, right? Or Nabukat and Netzer. You know, it's like, those are hard names to pronounce. Uh, but even the last chapters of Daniel are extremely visually stunning, the visions that, uh, that he gives. Uh, yeah, the transfiguration, right? The gospel accounts of Jesus really shiny on the mountain. And no, it's not a Tide commercial. Yeah. The book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, yeah. Yeah, uh, describing, you know, uh, the beginning of the world. Uh, creation through, like, you know, uh, the call of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Yeah. Any other visually stunning portions of the Bible? Yes. Revelation. Revelation, right? The whole book of Revelation. It's like all the colors, all the stones, all the metals, uh, the descriptions of like, oh, it's like a, uh, like tongues of fire, like furnished brass, like, you know, just one after another uh, of the descriptions of the visually stunning things that are taking place. Yeah? For the mathematicians, uh -huh. the building of the the building of the ark and other structures. Um, yeah, that uh, they visually they they visually describe even giving the specs, right? They give the specs uh, of the ark, uh, of the temple, of the tabernacle. Yeah, Eileen's got one. Yes, all the activities around the Exodus. Yeah, yeah, the activities around the Exodus. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what part is it? Yeah, it is. Chronicles. Oh! <laughs> yes, when you read like the 11 chapters of names, right? Uh, name. So and so. We got so and so. We got so and so. Yeah, but if you look at the whole that's list, pretty that's pretty stunning. It is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, card. Song of Solomon. Ooh, yeah. Song of Solomon. Ooh, okay. Uh, it's getting a little warm in here. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the Psalms, right? Uh, Proverbs. The Proverbs can also, uh, the, the whole wisdom section of, of, of scriptures, right? But yeah, Song of Songs, especially, yeah. Psalms, uh, Proverbs, yeah. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the descriptions of the temples, of the city walls. Again, a lot of precious stones and metals uh, emphasized, and water flowing here and everywhere. Right? And don't worry about the flood damage. Yes? Easter Sunday. Easter Whichever Sunday. Version you read. Yeah, the accounts of the resurrection, right? They give such wonderful detail, right? You can almost smell the, uh, the aloes, the 70 pounds of aloes, right, that the ladies are bringing uh, to give a proper burial to Jesus. Right, and then surprise, he's risen. Yeah. Honestly, also relating to that, the crucifixion. Yeah. Crucifixion. It is right. We've even heard a little bit today uh, for uh, from Luke chapter twenty-three. We hear of Jesus' crucifixion and the details, the stunning details that are given uh, at the ends of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right. We get. I think we can say what. But someone said what part isn't right. But yeah. All right. So. Um, but yes, this uh, chapter seems to be uh, extra visually stunning. So let's get into the text itself. So uh, what we'll do is we'll break it in chunks of three verses. Verses 1 to 3, verses 4 to 6, and then verses 7 to 9. Okay? All right. So could someone read Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1, 2, and 3? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. 
Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. All right. Your light, right? Based on verses 1 to 2, from where does your light shine? Right? Whose light is it? And where is the source of the light? So let me take a look at verses 1, 2, and 3 one more time. What is the source of your light, and how does your light shine? Over you. Okay, so there's this light, and it shines over you. It comes from the Lord, right? So what kind of picture do you have when you think of a light coming from the Lord and shining over you? A what? A sunbeam. A sunbeam. Ooh, that's a good one. That's fine. I didn't think of it. Yeah, that's great. But the sunbeam's coming down. Helicopter searchlight. Helicopter searchlight. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know, when you're in darkness and you need help, a helicopter searchlight is a good thing. Right? All right, good. Yeah, yeah my, my translation says the Lord rises upon you. Yeah. Like the sun rises, the Lord rises. Upon yeah. You. Like the sun rising in the dawn, and it's shining upon you. Right. Yeah, I also, I also picture like a spotlight. You know, like the spotlight shining on you, right? It comes from outside you, comes from above, and it's shining on you, right? Good. Um, so why is that important? There's a light from the Lord. And it's shining on you. Why is that significant? Why is that a wonderful picture? Yeah. The darkness. The darkness, right? Yeah, the darkness, right? Darkness shall cover the earth. Thick darkness shall cover the people. But, but what? Right? The Lord will arise upon you. His glory will be seen upon you, right, that as we are in darkness, as the darkness starts to overcome the whole world, God's light shines. Where? Upon you. On us. On you. But it's not coming from us. But it's not coming from us, right? It's not within. It's from the outside coming in. So it's a wonderful picture of grace, right? You know, that uh, there is a gift here where God gifts his glory. He gifts the light from outside of us or despite us, right, and, and shines on us, right? And that's a wonderful picture of divine grace. Okay. All right, what are the synonyms and antonyms of light in verses 1, 2, and 3? So what are the synonyms? What are the synonyms of light? Shining. Shining. All right. Glory. glory, right? The glory, brightness of God. Any other translations? Uh, any other synonyms of light? Illuminate. Illuminate. Using the Latin. I like it. I like it. That's where it comes from. Rise, shine. Right? It's that illuminar. Right? Illumined. Right? Any other uh, synonyms of light in verses 1, 2, and 3? Brightness. Brightness, right? It's God's brightness, right? God's brightness shining on you in the darkness. All right, any other uh, uh, antonyms of light in verses 1, 2, and 3? That's the opposite of light. Yeah, most of our Bibles say darkness, right? Uh, how else is it described? Darkness described? Gloom. Gloom. Okay. Covered. Covered. Ooh, yeah, covered over. Thick darkness, right? Not just darkness, but thick darkness. What's the difference between darkness and thick darkness? How well you can see here. How well you can see, right? White light. You can feel it. You can feel it. Yeah, have you ever been in a place where you can't actually see or even feel like... You know, uh oh dark? So, it brings to mind, for me, this this... Scout summer camp in Central Michigan. <laughs> I mean, like 10 miles from the nearest piece of civilization. 
and walking about on a moonless, cloudy night, and I cannot see my hand in front of my face. I cannot see anything, and for whatever reason, I had no light. Trying to find my way back to the cabin, just it was so inky black. Did you find all the poison ivy? <laughs> no, we found the tree. Found the tree. Ooh, yeah, found the tree. Yeah. We were in the Ohio caverns yesterday. Yeah. And they turned the lights out, and that is utter darkness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You try to find your way out in utter darkness. Yeah. 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 No way. Yeah. All right. The balloon mm -hmm. is a guttural sound already, but the, the scepter is a good mm -hmm. You know, that guttural sound would be in Hebrew, but that adds to if you're reading it. Yeah, it's like the guttural it's, sound. It just it, it, it sounds balloon. and feels yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds and feels bad. Yeah. Anyone who's ever been in that type of dark pitch or in, in a smokehouse or anything like that, that's that th it's overwhelmingly suffocating. You just don't know which direction to go. Yeah, or even know what direction you are. Yes. Right, and that's well, a picture of our fallen nature. It's, it's a picture of our sin, right? That it can be so blinding that we don't even know where we are or what direction is up, or north, south, east, and west. Good luck trying to get yourself out of that. You can't, right? You put yourself in the middle of a cave or cavern, pitch black, you're not going to get out, right? But the Lord shines. Yes? That same we read in verse 3 that says, The nations and kings shall come to your come to the light. Yeah. So, there, so people in that thick darkness are then drawn to. Yes. The and there is something about when you are in pitch black dark, What's the greatest thing to ever see? Light. Light, right? Light, especially when you're lost, right? And you want to get back home, right? The one thing you see is light, and God shines it, right? He shines it where? On his people. He shines it on you. And what's the response? Peoples and nations and kings are like, whoa, there's something bright over here. We had a beautiful uh, retreat up in high school. We went up to Hocking Hills, mm -hmm. to a cabin that was there. Um, and so we went on this midnight hike. No one was allowed to have any flashlights or anything. We had to trust each other and help each other, like when it was muddy or there was a cold. And we came into this open spot, and it was a hill. And everybody started running down the hill. And so we were all at the bottom of the hill. And our leader was at the top of the hill, and he had, had a lighter. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we all were like, where's, where's? And we looked up at the top of the hill, and we had left our leader standing there as we rushed into this open chasm mm -hmm. of, of, you know. So it was, it was very illustrative, and, and because it was dark, that was our only source of light. So any other pictures come to mind as you hear or read verses 1, 2, and 3? Any other pictures, images coming into your mind as you hear verses 1, 2, and 3? Yeah, probably. I just think of the darkness of uh, people grouped by the pagans and mm -hmm. the um, sad, tragic way they lived in. The light is there, right? And we want the light to shine right? and be extended, right? And that's one of the, the joys of missions, right? That we extend that light so that it shines in other dark places as well. Uh, so that we may enjoy that light. And some will come, right? Some come. Uh, the image that just popped into my head was when I was out on my ship in the middle of nowhere and the old phrase it's always darkest before the dawn is actually a true Very saying true. because an hour before it starts getting light it is I mean you can see nothing right and then you see like just slowly very very slowly a little bit of light start creeping up and you're like 
oh, thank goodness, I was afraid there for a minute. <laughs> and then, uh, we, you know, you're afraid that, oh, you're going to fall overboard or you're going to die somehow. And it's like, yeah, this is yeah, amazing. It's, it's disorienting. Yes. Yeah. And yet, there it is, this comfort. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay, uh, Robin had to tell back. Yeah, oh, Robin. my image was uh, the wise men following the star mm -hmm. in the dark. Yeah, yeah. I think this image is going to come quite regularly, right? There, there's this sense of, we can't help but think of the wise men, right? From the East, from nations that did not know the Lord, yet followed the star to come worship the newborn kings, right? And kings coming to this light, right? Yeah, Balaam? Yeah, it's a military ground deployment um, in a third world country. Uh, a lot of a lot of the places where you go, when it gets dark out at night, it's just dark. That's it. Mm -hmm. When the U.S. military came in and established Camp Bonsfield in uh, Kosovo, you can pretty much be anywhere within a hundred miles and look at the haze on the horizon and go, "I'm heading there." <laughs> so you could you could yep. wait till night if you get totally lost. Look at the yellow haze on the horizon and go, uh -huh. "That's where I'm heading," because you could see the light pollution. From the U.S. military, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not, nothing else. It's just black and white. And so, you know, this idea that there's a light that can draw the nations to you, they can look across the horizon and see where they got to go. Yeah. 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 My screensaver or whatever is on my computer is a picture, a strong picture of the day, Earth at night, and it's just one night when we're all clear to all over the Earth. And you can see why Africa is the dark country. And you can see the demilitarized zone between South Korea and North Korea by how much light there is. Mm -hmm. It's just dark. Uh, yeah. Both sight and sound are important. Yeah. Several performances of Arnold um, Messiah. Um, the verse 1 through 3 is one of the darkest arias in Arnold Messiah. Mm -hmm. It's a baritone or bass aria. Mm -hmm. yeah. He took it from Isaiah, or a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, uh, other. Going to Berlin Wall, when you flew into oh, Berlin, yeah. you mm -hmm. could see where the east was and the west. Because yeah. the west was, the west was the light, mm -hmm. and the east was mm -hmm. dark. It was dark. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The light shines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of the things we often forget is that things that are scary in the dark are shadows. Mm -hmm. And then you can't have shadows unless there's a light source. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is find the light source and the shadows come out. It's not scary. Yeah. Um, just a, another uh, point, uh, someone already made this connection, but you know, we talk about rising, right, or your rising, right? It's uh, talking about the sun rising you know, at dawn. Right, and, and uh, in Hebrew, but in other cultures and languages, right, the, uh, the figurative language of sunshine tends to be something that is about happiness, right? Brightness, blessedness, right? It's like the good old song, you are my sunshine, right? Yes, like <laughs> What's this hymn? <laughs> But yeah, we, 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 we speak this way, right? And, and we uh, communicate this way, but yeah, the same image of God being our source of happiness, blessedness, and the relief and the joy that we feel uh, when, oh yeah, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to just accidentally walk off the side of this ship, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and I can see where I'm going, right? Because God shines. Because God shines. All right. I think we got one, two, and three done. So how about four, five, and six? All right. Someone read verses four, five, and six. Lift up your eyes around about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar. Your daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant in your heart will thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba will come. 
It will bring gold and frankincense and will bear good news of the praises of the Lord. All right. So verses 4, 5, and 6. What's coming? What's coming to you? The wise men. Again, we can't help but think of the wise men, right? Yeah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wealth of the nations. Your family. Your family, right? Your sons and daughters. Right? Yeah. So yeah, sons and daughters. Abundance of the sea. Wealth of the nations. And then verse 6. We got gold. We got frankincense. Yeah, let's throw it for. Or, or, sorry, we got gold and frankincense, right? What else? Don't forget the camels. Camels! Yeah. Right? Got some camels coming. King James says the multitude of camels will cover your land. Yeah. That's a lot of camels. That's a lot of camels. <laughs> right? Camels have two humps, the dromedaries have one. There you go. Back train for two. Picture the B sideways. Back train is two. The dromedaries is one hump. Right? A D sideways. There you go. Yeah. Camels covering you, your land. All right. Oh, and I think there's one more. The end of verse 6. What else is coming with the golden frankincense? Good news. Good news. Good news. Proclamation. Tidings of great joy. All right. So what's the response when you see this happen? When uh, your sons and daughters come from afar... And you look around and you see them gathering together. What's the response according to Isaiah? Say it again. Heart will throb and swell with joy. Right? You'll see and be, verse 5, right? You're going to see it and be radiant. Right? You're going to beam. You're going to beam with joy. Right? Will burn. Uh, yeah. The study notes talk about Where's that uh, camels were also used for war, uh -huh. and this is not, the, they're not bringing weapons and war and all the things that come with that, mm. they're bringing stuff. They're bringing gold and frankincense yeah. and good news. Yeah, so it's very different, like it's not war that's coming on these camels, it's, 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 it's the good stuff. Gold and frankincense yeah. and good news, all right, all right, the good camels. <laughs> I got that. Yeah, the good camels. All right. What else do you see when you read in here verses 4, 5, and 6? Any other images come into mind as you hear, as you read verses 4, 5, and 6? What other images? Yeah. Mass exodus. Mass exodus. In a good way, right? Yes. Right? It's, yeah. the, it's, the, it's the opposite of exodus, right? It's the road back home, right? It's that Mass. homecoming. What? Mass entrance. At mass entrance, right? Exodus, so it'll be like introdus. <laughs> entrodus, the road in, the road that leads home, right? Uh, yeah, I think of a lot of country music talking about roads and roads that bring you home, right? <laughs> to grandmother's house we go! <laughs> They're singing. They're singing. <laughs> right? Or God bless the broken home that led me straight to you. <laughs> I'm not singing. I'm rapping. <laughs> There's also a feel here of like I mean we don't have this of the party that the father gives when the prodigal son returns home, right? And all the people are gathered, and it's a big view, and everyone is happy, right? Because when you think of like exiles returning home, a lot of times they return home to destruction, and you know, everything they had was gone and lost. But here we're returning home to joy and welcome. Yeah, and that, uh, that does remind us a lot of the uh, parables of the lost and the prodigal son, right? Because when the, 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 when the cause part of it, also you know your history, right? I mean, when we talk about the exiles, right? I mean, who brought that upon themselves, right? The Israelites, the Judahites, brought that exile upon themselves for their rebellion by not listening 
to the Lord and to his prophets, right? And God allowed that mass exodus to happen. And then you have this picture of a joyful homecoming, right? And it's, and it's wonderful. All right, card, yeah. A lot of books have a common story arc of this journey. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the book, it's quite common for the title or character to return back to the place that he started from. Mm -hmm. And there's this, this feeling of catharsis that humans get when we return home. And I feel like that is yeah. what this is describing. <laughs> Yes. I'm just actually looking forward to going back home to Michigan for a few days. Just for a few days. <laughs> but uh, it'll be nice. Yeah. I also get a feeling of safety and security um, when it says your, your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. That is comfort. That is open arms and bringing in and protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It kind of makes uh, the that is the question. What's the you? You know, it says it's returning to you. Who's you? Christ. Could be Christ. Could be the land. Right. Could be Zion. Could be the temple. All right. Could be you personally. <laughs> yeah, it could go a couple different ways here. It has to be positive. It has to be positive, right? That's the only thing, right? We know that this is a very positive message, right? There is tidings of good news here, right? Uh, yeah, that's why, yeah, we have that picture of there's a return, right? And, and I think maybe that one comment of, like, that story arc of, you know, returning, right? And, and really, if you look at the whole Bible, right, it's a story of return, right? That we as human beings uh, were created in the image of God, Right? In a perfect relationship with our Creator, with our God, and with one another. But of course, that fall into sin has really broken that relationship and exiled away from the Garden of Eden, right? Uh, into this world, right? And what's the point? The light comes, the light shines in the darkness, you know, Jesus Christ. And by the gospel, we return, right? The Holy Spirit brings us back to our home brings us back into that relationship with God. And, of course, the end of the story, you know, end of our story, is a return back to paradise, right? A return back to that full glory and radiance of being with God and being in perfect union with him and with one another, right? And that's the wonderful hope and joy of, you know, especially today when we celebrate the last Sunday of the church year, right? That Jesus is bringing his eternal kingdom. And even from the cross, what does he say? Today you will be with me in paradise. It's that homecoming, right? And you can almost picture paradise, right? Bringing little sons and daughters, carrying on the hip, right? Coming home. Country road. Ah, no, I was speaking with. I'm like uh, Henry. Uh, is it Henry Einsford Hill, right? Who, who who doesn't really sing, right? He kind of just speaks it. In. Oh, Henry, Higgins? Henry Higgins, yeah, Henry Higgins, right? Henry Higgins like he doesn't sing, right? He just kind of talks it. So, yeah. But yeah, that, that's that's what we got. All right, anything else? Uh, visions, images, verses 4, 5, and 6. Kevin? Uh, just the, the, the daughter carried on the hip for me. Anyways, my daughter Alex was 3 pounds, 7 ounces when she was born. So till age 6, she was on my hip constantly. Yeah. yeah. What a joy it is to carry them. I always like it when you carry them, right? Uh, they grow fast. Those of you who have wee ones, I know the struggle is real. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> But it's worth it, and you will miss the days when they are, like, talk. in your arms, right? When they fit in your arms. Because there will come a day where they kind of just spill over. Uh, and then it actually, like, will hurt your back to carry them. <laughs> All right, so that day will come. So cherish and value these days. All right, it's 
worth it, I tell you. It's worth it. And with Jesus and caffeine, all things are possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the first word, the very beginning. It says, lift up your eyes all around and see. Yeah. That it's kind of like, it's not just, first of all, it's drawing us up mm -hmm. out of our, our own mire. Mm -hmm. But also here, like, all around, it's from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the image shared about you know uh, out in the Middle East, right? You know, like no, you're not. You think you're in darkness, but if you just look up and take a look and see what God's shining, it there is light. There is light in the darkness, and it shines. Right? Yeah. Think about the birth process, where the baby's in complete darkness. Mm -hmm. And then through great tribulation, first into the mouth. That's, that's the same image of death. Yeah. We think it's light here, but through great tribulation, we will burst into the real life. Yeah. And it's a picture of, yeah, uh, new birth, right? Uh, faith, you know, unbelief to faith, and of course also death to eternal life. <laughs> It's well. Tidings a good news. And happy homecoming. Alright. Uh, seven, eight, and nine. Let's uh, get three more verses. Alright, someone, someone read verses seven, eight, and nine. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered from you. The rams of Nabioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will beautify my house. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like those through their windows? For the coastlands shall, shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first. Bring your children from afar, their silver and gold with them. For the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because He has made you beautiful. All right. So, uh... Kadar, we'll say Arabia, Nebio, Ishmael's firstborn son, so again, kind of synonymous with uh, Middle East, Arabia. Uh, coastlands could be anywhere on the Mediterranean, uh, which is a big sea. Uh, Tarshish, uh, again, there's one little spot in uh, northern Syria, or it could be as far as Portugal, Spain, uh, since it's coastlands, we'll go with the latter. Um... Uh, so what's coming to you? What does Isaiah say is coming in? Verse 7. Hmm? The sons again, right? Yeah? The sons. Your children from afar. Okay, they're bringing your children. And their wealth. And their wealth, right? Your children and their wealth. Oh, that's kind of nice. Here's children, and here's some wealth to go with it. <laughs> Pretty good deal, right? Silver and gold. Uh -huh. <laughs> what else is coming? More livestock. More livestock. Man, we got the camels, and now we get sheep. Flocks. The rams. Lowercase r. All right. All right, yeah. The, the flocks of the Middle East. A lot of those times you think it's probably like of a good reputation, right? You know, you have like the cedars of Lebanon, right? They're known for like, you know, their awesomeness, right? Uh, you know, it uh, could be like the coffee from South America or let's see, something that's known for something, right? The chocolate from Saunders from Detroit. Uh, <laughs> the football from Columbus. You know, those things. You know, something it's known for. Right? Esther Price chocolates from Dayton. Right? There you go. So, yeah. Romans 8. All creation be set free through bondage. Yeah. We've seen all creation. Ooh. Coming into this glory, the camels, the yeah, stuff. coming to God's glory and enjoying, it. right? Yeah, that all creation will be redeemed on the last day. 
Yeah, it talks about new heavens, new earth, which actually will come into Isaiah's verbiage uh, at the end of chapter 60 and at the end of the book, especially chapter 65, 66. Uh, it will talk about the new heavens and the new earth. Yeah. Good. All right, any other pictures you see or hear? Are any other pictures that you see uh, as you hear and read verses 7, 8, and 9? Yeah. So in verse 9, it says, um, For the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. Mm -hmm. The Holy One uh, of Israel in the New Testament, um, all the demons that Christ ever cast out, they call him the Holy One of God. Yeah. And so in in this whole chapter, I'm starting to see, oh, this is really talking about the life, death, and resurrection of Christ mm -hmm. in a sense because God's kingdom is more beautiful now that Christ has redeemed mankind yeah. because this was supposed, supposed to be the relationship from the beginning and now it's redeemed, and now it's claimed for, and now it's more beautiful because the, yeah. the stone, if you will, is returned back to the place that it was supposed to be. Yeah. And so that's what I was getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See the, the relationship of the Father and the Son? Yeah. Yeah, All right. Which also is a big thing for Christmas and for Epiphany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Tarshish was the city that Jonah wanted to try to escape yes. because it was the farthest possible point on the map that he could yeah. find. Yeah. At the end of the earth, if you will. Right now you're talking about the opposite, <coughs> the ends of the earth coming. And they're going to come. Right? They did witness, the people who were on that boat towards that way were, they did witness the glory of God that day. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. There's one more thing I was going to make a comment. Yeah. And that, yeah, at the very end, right? All these ships and Tarshish and bringing children from afar because the Lord has made you beautiful. Right? That when God's people are God's people, right? When we live by grace, uh, when we share the good news, when we have hope, right? That yes, the Lord makes us beautiful. Right? And, uh, yeah. That there is something desirable about the church, still, about God's people, uh, about God's faithful people, the message of salvation, right? And it is beautiful. Okay. All right, closing thoughts. So, um, real briefly, uh, I think we've already covered this, right? How is the song fulfilled in the New Testament? Uh, a lot of comments. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 is the visit of the Magi, right? That literally, people from the nations from afar, literally brought in gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? We assume they have camels too, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, that they worshipped the light, right? The savior of the world. And what was declared outside the city? Good news, the tidings of good news, great joy, that will be for all the peoples, right? <coughs> Even the heavens declared and shown the glorious light in the middle of the darkness while the shepherds were out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks at night, right? And so, yeah, this, uh, this song is clearly fulfilled in the birth of Jesus and, of course, as uh, the epiphany, the visit of the wise men uh, to the young child Jesus. Uh, yep. It is also this Bible passage, the first six verses, is the Old Testament lesson for the epiphany of our Lord. So on January chapter 6, uh, our churches will use uh, this Bible reading uh, as well. So I'm going to skip over to one other kind of use, uh, and that is the Latin title, Sergei Illuminari, Arise, Shine. Uh, this is, again, uh, kind of a Roman Catholic slash... Uh, Book of Common Prayer, so that'd be kind of like Anglican, Presbyterian uh, circles. Uh, this is one of their canticles from Isaiah. Uh, usually, uh, it's used for daily prayer services, so like our equivalent of like 
matins, vespers, evening prayer, morning prayer, Compline, right? Uh, those kinds of prayer services, whether that's in like a uh, convent uh, or just uh, where for like uh, devotional purposes at a Christian college uh, or a retreat setting. Uh, or a very large parish that has weekly services, or for like Advent and Lent, right? You know, that's when this kind of uh, song or canticle uh, would be used in, in these churches, or in our churches in the equivalent, okay? Yeah, M839 in our, church, in our service book yeah. is one through three. Right, we have a lot of good hymns that are not word for word, Isaiah chapter 60, but... <laughs> do pick up uh, very clear uh, uh, things. And actually, that's my next slide uh, coming up. <laughs> uh, so this song in particular, again, verses 1, 2, and 3, a little bit in verse 11, a little bit of verse 14, and then closing with verses 18 and 19. And the main theme uh, is that as, as we sing this canticle, uh, we're looking forward to the day when we're secure in Zion uh, and that God is our eternal light. Right, uh, kind of that image of Revelation where there will be no need for sun, no need for moon, because the Lord will be its light. Right, And that actually is later on in chapter 60. And, of course, we hear that from Revelation. So that's what it is. And in our hymnody. Uh, we, we use chapter 60, especially for uh, hymns on missions. Uh, we use it for Advent, uh, as we talk about our coming Messiah. Uh, and also Epiphany, again, as the wise men uh, and the nations uh, are drawn to that holy light known as Jesus. So, uh, so for our uh, closing song, we'll use... As with gladness, men of old. All right. So here we go. As with gladness, men of old, did the guiding star behold. As with joy they hailed its light, leading onward.
you. We accomplished at least seven, 35 songs from Isaiah chapters 1 through 60. We learned a little bit about how to read Hebrew poetry and use context clues to discern the meaning better. Uh, we covered a wide range of genres and styles of poetry, songs of woe, taunts, laments, thanksgivings, praise, prophecy, suffering servant songs, uh, parables, and many more! Uh, let's say we identified clear connections uh, to the Old Testament, clear connections and how they are fulfilled in the New Testament, uh, especially in Jesus Christ. So, that is the end of this study, the Songs of Isaiah. So, starting next week, celebrating church history saints. So what we'll do is next Sunday, we'll talk about commemorating the saints and the what and the why and the how. Uh, it's kind of like an introduction to what we're going to cover. Uh, and then we'll just start at it. So uh, uh, December 4th, we'll cover John of Damascus, theologian and hymn writer uh, on December 4th. So there's summary. We covered the context and organization of Isaiah chapter 60. We covered verses 1 through 9 of Isaiah chapter 60 and heard some wonderful pictures of the light that shines in the darkness and gave application and closing thoughts to this entire Bible study. Thank you so much for your time and for your attention and for sharing those wonderful insights and images. I pray this uh, study was a blessing for you. And uh, let's stand and pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 